and good afternoon. Um, yes, uh, my name is Naeem Ben Hamida. I'm presenting, uh, you know, on behalf of a work that was done in collaboration with a corporate technique in Montreal. This work is done by Hamid Reza, and uh, just I'm presenting on his behalf, you know, and uh, so any mistake is mine, and any credit goes to him. So we're making a deeper dive in one of the key components that is enabling optical communication and then uh, electrical links. And this is primarily the high-speed data converters. And what defines the performance in high-speed data converters is the ability to sample it at the right moment and to, to get the fidelity of the signals and to get the, you know, uh, the SNDR that is required. When we are dealing with the wireline transceivers, we are talking about sampling rates in the, you know, the 100 giga samples plus. For that, we cannot really generate clocks that are running. It's not efficient to generate these clocks that are running at 100 gigahertz. So the solution for this on the, um, you know, quantizer is parallel, you know, um, sampling. And that's what he called time interleaved uh, ADCs. So time interleaved ADCs are done, you know, you know made of several parallel uh, track and holds and uh, quantizers to be able to sample it as an effective sampling rate that is n times the individual slice that are sampling it. But because due to process variation and temperature variation, the, AD, the ADC exhibits you know, several you know, misbehavior or, or you know, deficiencies, like gain errors, offset error, and uh, sampling mo moment skews. The focus, yeah, so as I keep repeating the same thing, I think ADC performance resolution is key in defining the implementation of the SNR of the system. Usually we want, we are looking for an SNR of the, uh, from the ADCs that is in the 30 dB plus to be able to take it completely out of the picture in the noise implementation or in the noise budget both on the electrical links and then the optical links. Uh, offset gain and timing mismatch degrade this resolution. And in order to, you know, to overcome that, we need to correct those. And ideally, we need to correct them um, in digital in the lowest power possible. So, here, just it's uh, you know waveform sampled at time intervals of t zeros, and with uh, a gain error, an offset error, and then uh, you know a timing error. And as you can see, you know here the characteristic of the signal instead of you know sampling y two, we are sampling y two prime because of time shift, and that time shift creates a degradation depending on the speed of operation. But what we can see from this, you know, as, you know, Y1 and, sorry, and Y1 and Y2, they are getting closer, Y2 and Y3, they are getting further away from each other. So the correlation between the two streams, Y1 and Y2 prime will increase, and the correlation between the Y2 prime and Y3 will decrease. And this is a characteristic that is being, you know, leveraged to be able to assess, you know, timing mismatch in time interleaved ADC. The performance degradation due to this is similar to performance degradation due to jitter, and this curve shows the uh, jitter impact on the SNDR. You know, uh, one picosecond will lead for 56 gigahertz bandwidth to less than 20, p 20 dB for a broadband signal. And this is, uh, you know, we, uh, you know it's, uh, the system will not be able to operate without error with these conditions. So for that, you know, we need to correct it. And this is so just a single tone, you know, uh, due to timing mismatch when we have 16 parallel streams, we'll have 16 images due to that uh, error. So as I said earlier, 
uh, I think the correlation between the two streams, if they are symmetrical, you know, if there is no error, there will be equal correlation between two consecutive streams. The moment, you know, the timing uh, is not right, then we just unbalance that correlation. And so effectively, yeah, as they are getting closer, they increase the correlation, as I said, as they're getting further away from each other, we, uh, the decorrelation will decrease. And this is what uh, we are using to, um, you know, extract the timing mismatch and correct the timing mismatch. So, the, yeah, we're assuming that the gain and, and offset are easily calibrated, and then the timing skew is estimated in the digital domain, and in this case, it's corrected in the analog domain, but it can be corrected also in the digital uh, domain too. So by setting, you know, uh, generating the timing shift of the signal, you know, at plus delta and minus delta, we can, using two separate FIR filters, uh, we can estimate the timing or the correlation between, we can have an, uh, an efficient implementation of the correlation. So uh, this, if we have, if we have uh, a perfectly timed signals, we'll have the pulse response that we are seeing in blue. The moment the timing shifts, then the impulse response will shift, and then we'll have like a fractional delay implementation so, you know, the number of taps that needed will increase to be able to, you know, cover that delay and to mimic that transfer function. So that's, so the system com here is, consists of two FIR filters uh, to create the delays plus delta and minus delta, and then uh, correlation estimation, and then an LMS engine to be able to converge to, to drive, you know, the, uh, the timing error to zero. But we can, by picking delta equal to half a UI, you know, we can reduce the number of FIRs, you know, to one instead of two. And uh, the minus 0.5 UI will be you know, straightforward, a delayed version of the plus five UI. And this reduces the hardware also by, you know, two for this application. At the same time, since we are dealing with you know, parallel streams of signals, we can use multi-rate implementation and we can uh, operate these correlation function, correlation calculation at a lower rate. We can reduce it by M if we are using, you know, M streams, and we can further reduce it by another factor if we decide that we don't need to track this variability, you know, in a very fast way. Uh, you know, there will be need if we want really to track jitter to have faster tracking. But if we are only tracking, you know, temperature uh, drifts or drift in timing due to temperature, these loops can be very slow and that will reduce the implementation also. Yeah, so that's effectively leveraging, you know, uh, the delta equal 0.5 to reduce the hardware. And this is a couple of sim uh, simulation results that shows, you know, for a single tone without correction, we'll have 16 spurs that will show up due to timing mismatch. And after calibration, and the SNDR for this will be 24 dB. And then the, uh, once we correct the timing mismatch, the SNDR will reach, you know, close to 60 dB. And uh, that's for a single tone, for a multi-tone, you know, the signature is different, but the performance is also visible. The improvement in performance is visible. So uh, in this simulation, the 10% standard deviation of timing mismatch is assumed for 16 interleaved uh, ADCs. So this uh, curves, they show, you know, how uh, the taps, they converge or the, uh, the LMS converges to the right timing corrections and how you know, the SNDR settles or go increases from less than uh, 30 dB to, uh, you know, almost 60 dB. So this is just so the resiliency of the method in, in uh, when we are running it 
uh, 100 uh, separate simulations, sorry. 100 separate simulation, and each time uh, we are generating random timing and random frequency of that timing, random frequency of the signal, and we are seeing that it's stable. We start with an SNDR that's 25 dB and with a standard deviation of 6 dB, and then uh, after correction, the SNDR is around 54 with a 5 dB of standard deviation. Uh, so, uh, as I said, this is a correction done in the analog, we can implement same fractional delay filter to correct it in the digital, and it becomes really a power performance trade-off. Um, that's it for my presentation.